Welcome to the Art Life Video Blog, day 153. My name is Awake. I'm Jacob Wolf. Thank you for having me here. And uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, do you just want to, first of all, first off, tell us briefly about yourself? Um, like personal stuff or like the art campaign kind of stuff? Uh, whatever you want. The art campaign. Okay. Um... So I'm f originally from Utah, um, and the Awake campaign started when I was in college. Um, I only attended for a year, but um, and, like within a year, I got very frustrated about the public education system and college in general, and that kind of is what really fired um, the whole idea of like the concept of Awake or what it's all based upon. Um, but I'm, I'm just super normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You seem like a fairly, yeah. fairly normal. <laughs> um, so, when and who introduced you to the art world? Um, my biggest um, inspiration, I would say, would be Dead Cell. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He was in Portland for a few years. Um, I don't think I am familiar with him. Incredible artist. Yeah, um, incredible line work. Just really talented overall. Um, I, when I was living in Utah, so I needed like an outlet for my art where I could watch it grow and I could watch um, my own progression so that I could see it and in a more tangible space. So I started putting things on Instagram um, and I ran along his page. Somebody else, you know, put up something of his. So then I was over on his, his side of things, and he was the first artist that I, that I ever really heard of doing stickers. And like having that be like a focus or a, a big space of, of energy being taken out, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like, um, that was huge for me. I realized like I could do that right now. I, mean, I don't have to like, get a college degree in order to start making stickers or start, start taking myself more serious, mm -hmm. you know? So, right yeah, on. for sure. And like even now, like um, some of the most exciting things that I'm doing is now with him, which is really awesome for me because right. I was like the dude that started all of it almost, you know. So that's that's awesome. How long ago was this? Um, like two years ago, probably. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in college, what was your focus there? I was going into school for art. Yeah. yeah, I was going to school for art, and I had um, my first semester. I had an incredible art teacher, super inspiring, and like class was incredible. Like I felt like I was learning a ton, and it was it was dope. Yeah, I mean, it was what I wanted. The rest of my classes were like general credits and whatever, but um, just kind of like busy work. You know what I mean? I wanted to be yeah. an artist. I wanted to you know graduate or whatever, but it just felt like. A, a distraction almost, but um, yeah, that first art teacher was kick ass for sure. Um, but the second semester, I had the worst art teacher I've ever had, and I felt completely uninspired in this class and and didn't feel like I was being taught to. I didn't think that the class was being taught to their own, like what they could become. It was just like get all these things checked off and then see it never you know I mean it was just like mm -hmm. such a it just felt like such a waste and I felt like I was wasting my money and it was and it was like all of that stuff that like really pushed me into like just moving away and spending my money a different a different way to get an education in art that was very hands-on very me making it happen mm -hmm. you know making sure that, like if, if I'm not networking then I'm not doing you know what I mean then I'm not going to achieve anything right so it became a lot more on my shoulders but that's, that's been good for my learning style. Right on. And then, so, was, was that the beginning of when you thought that you just, was it the second semester or was it like by quarters? It was the second semester. Second semester. Yeah. So after that semester, you just decided to drop out? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, um, yeah, I was like dating this girl too, and we were like really serious, and it was awesome and whatever. 
but it was like I need to leave. Like I, if I if I stay, oh what's up? <laughs> if I stay um, in town for another semester, I'll be wasting my time, and that's terrible. <laughs> like that's the most important thing, and like we can date long distance or whatever, and that will you know has come and gone, but like. The most important thing in my life at that point was getting out of the place that I was so that I could further my career in art, mm -hmm. you know, in a more serious way. And so you moved from Utah to Portland, mm -hmm. and you were inspired by Dead Cell at that point. Mm -hmm. Big time. And decided to start making stickers. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your reaction to when like your first attempt at stickers um it was it was funny just like how quick things evolved into my own style of stuff i when i was first starting i was using like oil-based sharpie stuff on just onto vinyl um and i was doing like a lot of colors and stuff and like really fast after that I just started layering vinyl and strips on top and making these like circle and square shapes and like almost like pill shaped characters um and then that just became like my thing you know and I was like really pushing that and it was super fun when I was doing it for myself and then I started selling packs and then I started selling a lot of packs and it was just like I couldn't keep up with with that and then trying to make art outside of it. I mean, it was like, that's all I had time for anymore. I was mm. cutting out all these things, making all these little things, like really like intricate stuff on the individual stickers that I'm sending in packs of 10. Were you know? doing hand-drawn stuff? Yeah, it was all hand-drawn, all hand-layered, like all hand-cut out, like collaging. It was crazy. Yeah. Like it was cool, but it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Like looking back at it, it was like, that was such a time, just like a black hole for my time. You know what I mean? It was like the day that I like, decided to stop making those and focusing on like this kind of stuff was the day that I like found my therapy again in art. <laughs> right. Because it was like, it just became too much. You know what I mean? So how long ago did you decide to start uh, or to, to make that switch? Um, as soon as I was taught how to screen print on vinyl, because I'm still making stickers now and putting them up, but like um, the amount of time it takes to screen print 20 stickers is minimal. You know yeah. I mean? You're just cutting them out instead of, you know, drawing each one, layering each one, and like, it's crazy. Do you do all your own screen printing? I do, yeah. Um, when I moved into town, I was able to link up with a lot of people. Um, and I met Invoice, and he has taught me how to screen print on vinyl. So, like, after, and I like work within his studio too, still. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're, we're homies these days, but. Yeah, it was really cool, um, and that was a huge help for me too. I uh, just talked to Invoice recently mm -hmm. about uh, how he inspired me to kind of get involved into the sticker world. Mm -hmm. um, it was like the first sticker that I saw that I was like, I need this, so I like very gently <laughs> removed it and Damn. <laughs> I like for a while I was just like collecting stickers in that way like mm -hmm. artists that I admire and whatever yeah. like making collages out of it because a lot of times it just gets buffed anyway mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like dust in the wind mm -hmm. so it was like my homage to all these artists that I, I like really respect mm -hmm. and then I started interviewing artists got to know a few through that way and now I'm kind of not making stickers, but I am like doing stencils, been very inspired by like scam and mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, I love it. I love mm -hmm. the the community. Oh yeah, dude, it's huge. Like when I first got into town, like I was planning on living in my car and I didn't have a job or anything like that, but it was just like, I gotta go now, you know? And my car died in California, so I was homeless, you know? Wow. So, like, I just got a rental, packed my stuff into it, and finished the trip, but was, like, relying on other people, you know? Like, not trying to be, like, a burden, but, like, I was like, yo, I'm kind of screwed right now. And so many people just kind of, like, 
circled around me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, I was like couch surfing on people's, you know, people's couches just within the Syria community, but also like, um, people off like couchsurfing.org or com or whatever, mm -hmm. and, um, other people from Instagram and just like, I was super taken care of, you know, that was insane. Right on. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell me a little bit more about this newer stuff that um, you're working on. The newer stuff, I also spent a lot of time with Nabru. I don't know if you're familiar with his stuff. Awesome. He has a great hand. There's a lot of calligraphy. But, um, he, he, like, shows me pens all the time. And he got me fired up about, like, this, like, ink stuff, pen. Um, but it just, like, makes me want to use more and more and more. Like, he gave me all the watercolor stuff. Nice. Because he was like not using it, or he felt like a bigger kid or something, and gave me pieces of it. But um, yeah, man, I've um, I love making pieces. I've always loved making pieces, but um, as of recent, it's been. Are these all more screen more prints? These are not. These are original. These like, are originals. Drawings. Yeah. Um, th these are watercolor. This is with coffee. Um, these are like India ink over here, but, um, I've got a ton of Indian ink, India ink yeah. that I've been wanting to use for something. It's just, awesome, man. Yeah. It's way cool. I, um, this over here, water, and yeah, I just put some India ink in it as well to like, oh, um, nice. like stain as like a background or whatever, but it's dope. My roommate just got one of those. Dope, yeah. <laughs> I have a few of them. Some have watercolor in them, some have, but that one has ink in it. But, nice. Yeah, they're dope. Um, uh, yeah, it's just diving further into the Awake campaign, like, um, what is kind of the main message that you're trying to get across? Just that, um, you, like, you're better than you think you are, you know what I mean? That's everything, like, I, I experienced a lot of depression, you know, and like, for a long time that really got me down. Um, and only only a couple times did it get like dangerous, but like, um, it's, it has to be watched. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like so many other people experience similar things, and I feel like I, just like as people, we don't like ourselves. You know, just like naturally we don't. We're know? our and own worst enemy. Exactly. Type like, of thing. Like, we think that people are really, like, huge critics of us, or, like, we think that, you know, we can't do anything about our situation, or, like, whatever, but honestly, people don't really think about us that much, you know what I mean? People mm -hmm. don't, like, in a good way, you know, like, people aren't right. super harsh on you, people They're aren't. not focused on our lives as much as we think they They're more are. focused on their own, just right. like I'm more focused on my own, you know what I mean? For sure. And that's, like, hell yeah, that's good, you know? Yeah, it's a really great <laughs> like. <laughs> And like, like everybody's trying and like, come on, man, don't be pushing yourself around. <laughs> come here, buddy. <laughs> like, I'm a cat person. Good, me too. Don't tell my dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just feel like people need encouragement and I need encouragement, you know what I mean? So like, if I'm putting stuff out, I feel like more people will put stuff out mm -hmm. and things will get better. <laughs> yeah, man. Art definitely is therapeutic, oh, yeah. and uh, a big part of why I started doing this video blog is to kind of spotlight artists as everyday people and to inspire more everyday people to believe that they too can be artists or are like innately artists. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a part of us that's inside, like it needs For to real, be yeah. exercised and massaged and mm -hmm. um, just, you need to practice, but you, it will eventually find your niche and like what you're For good real. at. And like, yeah. It's crazy, like the things that people will become passionate about that and that like the thing that consumes people's time, it's incredible, man. Cause mm -hmm. like, one of the girls that lives here, she's like a scientist, you know, and she like gets really into that and that consumes her time, mm -hmm. you know, like in the same way that 
art consumes mine, you know, and it's like, as long as people can find that thing that like makes their time dissolve into nothing, like that's a thing that will supply their life, you know, that's totally what I feel. Um, if One they, second, they I'm gonna check session. the phone yeah. just to make sure that it's still recording. For sure. Anxiety about this shit. Yeah, it's still recording. <laughs> Good. How's it going, brother? Great, how you doing, man? Excellent. Good. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, but tell me about projects that you would like to see yourself doing. Um, like, what do you mean? Like, I would love to to paint murals, you know? Murals. Like, big stuff in the city. Um, I don't, I'm not there yet, you know what I mean, not even close, Yeah. but I don't see why I couldn't be there in, you know, five or ten years. Right on. Yeah. Um, is that kind of your main focus? Like, where where would you like to see yourself and your art go in the future? Where the most people can see it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So For like, sure, man. Like a mural, like a public mural is where it's, like, that's what I want so bad. Definitely. Like, to be in that that scene or culture or whatever because like following those people like and their own what they're doing it's just like they're traveling the world yeah they're traveling the world and they're expressing their message you know mm. to everybody like that's that's the shit you know that's that's the goal so right on um do you have any well first off I'm going to say there is a gallery that I throw. It's called the Fourth F and Friday. It's generally held on the fourth Friday of the month, mm -hmm. uh, whichever month I decide to do it on. Um, I I just want to mention it right now, and if anybody's watching this, I don't know when the next date is going to be, but I'm looking for a venue for the one year anniversary. Uh, where all of the artists that I've interviewed up to that point are invited to come show art. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to be doing one at my house for some of the more recent. So there should be, in the near future, two galleries that you'll get an invite to, right. to show. Yeah, super down. Um, and uh, a little bit about that. At the one at my house, there's generally live music, there's a ton of artists, uh, I provide free booze and food for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we paint on the walls in my house, and uh, right on. we do a raffle. Mm -hmm. um, so I ask all of the artists that I've interviewed if there's something small that they wouldn't mind donating to the raffle, and then anybody that comes through, any of the guests that come through can donate $5 or more to the, um, the gallery and the video blog mm -hmm. in order to get a raffle ticket and then we give away a ton of art at the end of the night. That's dope. Um, it's not never a requirement mm -hmm. and uh, people have denied it and I'm totally like understanding and mm -hmm. like no harsh feelings about that sort of stuff. But uh, look forward to yeah. those uh, invites. <laughs> I just need